Hi, loves. So I have a special treat for you today. Some of you might have seen Dakota Chanel pop up in our Sisterhood of the Mermaid Moon group, if you're a part of that. Um, with her water magic recently she came out with like the most amazing water video that I'll link with this um, talk that you can go see and become inspired mm -hmm. by so I wanted to um, connect with her she's also a priestess of the Magdalene really connected with um, the rose and a mermaid um, and a water priestess so we wanted to have a little conversation today um, to hopefully inspire you and inspire everybody inspire us um, and really honoring your presence uh, for watching and knowing that you're really a part of this conversation as well and we're feeling you and we're all sitting in this circle as beautiful equals filling in different pieces mm -hmm. for each other. So Dakota, <sighs> yes, you can probably see that, well, maybe you can or can, but um, she's in Hawaii on the island of <laughs> um, which is amazing. Flowers. So could you just sort of briefly tell us a little bit about um, yourself and how you show up in the world as a water priestess and as however you kind of see yourself? Yeah, absolutely, love. I just want to just say thank you so much. I feel so grateful to be here with you all today and talk about the mermaid magic and the waters. Um, gosh, there's so much. I guess um, it really goes back to when I lived in Ashland, Oregon. Um, I went to massage school there and did two years of aquatic body work and became an ordained water priestess and then was just called by past life, like Lumerian remembrances and the dolphins to move to Kauai. Did um, a doula training over there actually and just attended births and like really deepened into the medicine of the land and lived there for three years and remembered the deeper layers of what it means to be a water priestess and the connection between the Magdalene and the Rose and just been devoting my life and service to this the past three years, working with women, retreats, one-on-one, -on -one, online workshops. And yeah, it's been a really amazing journey and I feel like it's all been inside. And that's really what I love about the water and about the path of the Rose is it's remembering what already lays within us. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really beautiful way of putting it, especially because I can get kind of trapped in this sometimes, actually more more often than I would like, of being like, oh my gosh, I I want to do that, I want to learn that, I want to go there, I want to do that training. Totally. Um, all of that's so valuable, like yes, yes to the trainings, but sometimes it's just not like available, or you maybe shouldn't do 10 trainings at one time kind of vibe. Yep, um, totally. And just that remembrance of like, ah, oh, when we just sit we can literally just like sit with ourselves and meditate with our dna meditate with our our souls and a lot of stuff Absolutely. will just awaken and what's yeah. right for us will come to us as well completely yeah so beautifully said and that really is part of the water magic it's like becoming our own oracles for the, our dna like our bodies are these books and our blood and our bones like contains all of this information it's really just how to access this depth within ourselves yeah, I've been really, yeah. yeah, really diving into that lately. Um, I'd love to ask you, so for the, the beautiful women listening, and maybe Merman, welcome, um, yeah. who are like, oh my gosh, I want to be a water priestess. Um, how can they, what's like, like you are a water priestess because we're all made of water. Um, some of mm -hmm. us just need to sort of practice and, and sort of remember, yeah. remember these ways. What's one thing that... Uh, today or tomorrow morning, uh, a practice that this um, person could do, um, mm. you beautiful souls who are, are here, um, mm. that can sort of help to, I don't know, think it's what's a water priestess practice, basically, yeah, is the question. Totally. I love, this, <laughs> I love this question. And I'm going to share what I always share. Like, this is for me, like the most foundational, like, it's so easy, it's so transformational. Um, and it's just a daily morning water prayer ritual. And so what you do, like, as you know, our bodies are made of water. We are these liquid moving oceans and the water that we drink, like the quality of water is of utmost importance. And a lot of the water that we drink is filled with, you know, contaminants like chloramine and fluoride, pesticides. So it's really important to source our water and get really pure water. This is a little bit of a tangent. I'm going to share the ritual in a minute, but spring water is so powerful. And why this is, is because it's 
made literally from the depths of Mother Earth. So not only are we getting the physical purity of there's not any of those modern toxins or contaminants, but there's all kinds of healthy living probiotics that you can't get in any other food source. And then the energetics, it's like literally drinking nectar from the mother's womb. So I encourage everybody to find a spring if possible that's near you and drink the water. If not, there's amazing options. Kangen machines are really incredible. It's all about that hydrogen, making sure that our bodies are drinking water that's full of living hydrogen. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever water you drink in the morning, I've been doing this ritual for years and teaching it to women. It's so simple and yet I just love how it connects me with my intention for the day and it's like making medicine and I have like a special little goblet you can go and like buy a beautiful goblet that you love and then fill it up with your spring water or whatever water it is that you like to drink and then before you put anything else in your body temple like before breakfast or anything making a water medicine infusion and so you can add like flowers or crystals or or miss gold, anything that you feel inspired. But the main practice is to do prayer with the water before you drink it. So holding it to your heart and using the vibration of your voice to infuse it with prayers. You can sing to it. Um, you can state your intentions for the day. If you have a pain or like a physical ailment that you're dealing with or some challenge in your life, you can speak that into the water and literally like make your own custom water medicine. And drinking that every morning is super powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And something I've been doing, I do it now every day, but I was kind of doing it off and on for a while. But for whatever reason, now I, I'm just a little bit more committed. Um, but as you're speaking, I'm like, I'm feeling the need to go slower. Like sometimes I'm really present and I go to my altar and I have like mm. a strong prayer. But a lot of the time I can also be pretty fast. I can just be like kind of walking and be like, I love you. I love you. Thank you. And totally. You know, and I, I'm wanting to just like really, uh, it's just a good reminder to drop in. And like, I mean, you know, I'm sure it's one, like if, if you know, we were in a really fast energy and that's what's available. You know, we have to be somewhere in two minutes and we have to go to the meeting. That's better. Exactly. Than I love you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Thank yeah. you. Okay, um, but yeah. And also to add, I, I'm going to look into the can. Like I've seen those machines before. I don't actually have one, but for me, we, the closest spring I know of for myself is a mm, about a two hour drive away. Mm -hmm. So what I do right now, um, is I use those uh, charcoal, um, act like, I forget what they're called. They're like Japanese ch charcoal that takes out the chlorine and takes out the chloramine, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll put my water in a, in a really big glass jar and I'll put it on the earth overnight under the stars. I'll put those Beautiful. charcoals in and I'll usually put like rose petals. We have some roses in our, on our property. Mm -hmm. Put some rose petals or some um, herbs from our garden. Um, then I'll let that sit overnight and just let the earth energy. And I've done that for a while, but when I watched this documentary on Gaia called, I think it's called Water. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Um, I haven't. Probably, oh, you need to watch it. You probably know most of the stuff that's in there, but some of the studies might be new to you. Um, there was this one thing that happened that made me like super like, no, I'm just earth every night. Like if I'm, you know, in bed and I forgot, no, get out of bed and do it. Wow. Because, there's this woman in this um, laboratory and they were doing experiments, you know, as you do when you're a scientist, and they had rats and water and poison all in this, I don't know what they were doing, but they were doing something. Wow. And there was sealed poison and it was fully sealed. Um, it was like, it couldn't, nothing could come out until it was like open. And um, it had dropped in water and the scientist didn't realize and when she came back in the morning, uh, she found it. She just took it out of the water um she knew it was sealed so she fed the rats the water or gave the rats the water that morning and all of them died and she was like okay what and so they tested the water and the water tra showed no traces of the poison physically um but sure. what they kind of deduced was the water had memory in it and it vibrationally yeah. took on the properties of that poison so it's like whatever the water is, water is like this, this, this memory sort of magical being and can hold vibration as a lot of us are um, remembering. 
Um, and so that's why I put it outside on the earth, you know, if I can't have the spring water most of the time, um, just to get the starlit energy and the earth energy and to have those energies like infuse the water overnight. Um, yeah. Beautiful. I'm so happy you mentioned that because that's another practice that's super powerful is to moonlight or starlight infuse your water. And there's something, yeah, like I don't know the science behind it, but just the magic of having your water be outside and like infused with all of the essence of the mystery of the darkness and like the peace and the quiet. And I love to leave it on the earth and then in the morning like swirl it also. And there's cool. something about just making it that vortex motion. Water loves to flow in spirals. Yeah. So shifting it, moving it in the spirals as well after that is, cool. is beautiful. That. We'll add that I that. love that. I haven't, I haven't tried the charcoal. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, where I live, we source our water from originally from a mountain across the ocean. So I feel like pretty good with the original vibration, but it still goes through a awesome. process. Um, and in the city, like, I think I'm trying to think of, you know, I know probably a lot of people are watching don't have a backyard right now. Um, even mm -hmm. if like, oh, you know what you can do? You can put your water on like a sacred symbol. Like here's the like Sri Yantra for example. Yes. Um, if you're like into the Sophia code, like I know there's a lot of people, um, that are, um, this is one of the practices that Kaya Ra gave. Um, if you don't know this book, it's called the Sophia code. It is really great. So good. Um, you can actually leave your water on like a sacred text, like the Sophia code. You can leave your water on a sacred symbol you can put crystals in your water. You can put herbs in your water overnight. You can write a prayer and put your water on that prayer. Yeah. Um, so if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't know where a spring is. I live in the city. I don't have a backyard. Like you can still do There it. are options. Yeah, there's options. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, it can be fun as well, like to make that, you know, not all the time, but to discover a spring, even if it is two, three hours away, just, you know, go once in a while and just, there's something really powerful too about making offerings to springs mm, and yeah. just seeing, seeing that water comes from the earth, like literally water comes out of the earth. And it just reminds me always like, wow, water comes out of the earth. We come out of the waters of our mother's wombs. Mm -hmm. And there's something really primal about drinking water um, from nature. Yeah. And I remember the first time I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, is this safe? Like you have all these programs, yeah. like fears yeah, from your exactly. childhood. Yeah. And yeah, then realizing just like everything else, it was in lie to about so many things and just feeling so yeah. good drinking this water from nature. And it's yeah, crazy. we've been programmed sure. to believe that the chlorinated fluoridated water out of our tap is safer and better for us than the water that comes out of the earth. Yeah. Or even sometimes in a stream, if it's a fresh stream, like I'll be like, oh, I shouldn't be drinking this, but then I do. Like it's just me as like thing. You know, like I'm gonna get sick, but I'm like, what? Like this is like anyway. Um yeah, yeah I totally have had that conditioning come up and have worked through mm -hmm. some of that. Um Finally, actually, we have a hot springs. Um, you have to take a two-hour boat ride there, but I I went to hot springs recently, and we like I was with some friends, and they happened to like still have the three G connection magically, and I was like, look up if we can drink hot springs water because it smells like eggs, and you wouldn't think mm -hmm. that you can, right? And you can. Well, Google said you can, so we were drinking the hot springs. <laughs> And, and like make like singing um to the place where it came out and that felt like oh it's beautiful really, yeah really ground yeah hot springs water is powerful uh-huh yeah. I don't drink it often because it's really intense but just the minerals and it's like a sacrament yeah you know yeah and, and different like, properties a little more information that people don't need it's like you know when I was passing gas over the next couple of days I literally <laughs> smelled like a hot spring egg <laughs> situation and I was like whoa I was like, am I the hot spring? <laughs> no, that was just, wow. Anyway, it is. That <laughs> no, I love, I love that. It just reminds me, like, I went to high school in this town called Pagosa Springs, Colorado, and literally the whole town smells like rotten eggs. Like, because it's such, the whole, it's built on a hot spring, a sulfur wow. hot spring. Wow. I know that smells so well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. intense. Wow, it feels so good. Um, yeah. okay, cool. So maybe like switching gears a little bit. Um, yeah, it's not that switched, but I'd love to kind of talk a little bit more about the Magdalene energies and frequencies. Mm. And I'm wondering, 
um, like for me, I know it was a definite process, like from first waking up and learning about the chakras and meditating and then sort of, oh, getting into the divine feminine and like, oh, getting more into like the womb. And then eventually like starting these priestess, you know, programs and paths. Mm. And then finally sort of having this remembrance of like, oh, the Magdalene and like Mary Magdalene and the order of the Magdalene and like the rose. Oh, and it was, it, mm. it took a while for me. I'm wondering like how the Magdalene like came to you consciously in your life and like Mm. when that process was or kind of what was happening around that time. Yeah, that's a great question. I love hearing about how everybody remembers. It's so different. Um, When I was a little girl, I was obsessed with roses. Like literally I named everything Rosemary, like my cat, (laughs) all my dolls, everything was named Rosemary. I had a rose baby blanket. Like I was just obsessed with roses from the time I was little and I didn't know why. And then when I was like 17, I read the Magdalene manuscript by Tom Kenyon. And that was like instant remembrance. I was like, oh my gosh, the Magdalene, like Isis, Mary Magdalene, like Yeshua, sacred union, you know, the masculine and the feminine integrated within. And I just remember like being completely um, immersed in like those practices and those meditations and it really transformed my life. But then the first time that I really deeply felt the Magdalene for myself um, was actually when I moved to Ashland, Oregon. I was doing the water priestess ordination with my teacher at the time, Jimana Sophia. And there's an amazing goddess temple in Ashland. Have you been to Ashland. I and haven't like, been yet, but I've definitely. Oh, it's so up. good, and it's actually on a hot spring, so it's oh, really super magic. Mm-hmm. They have a mikvah, like it's a really special place. And it was Mary Magdalene's feast day, and my teacher was doing a men's honoring ceremony, and she asked me to be one of the priestesses, and I was like, sure, you know, I'd love to do that. So, went to the temple, and we were all preparing, and we all had different stations. You know, like one woman was washing the men's feet and like anointing it with sacred oil. And another was like listening to their heart and like, what's really present for you? Like, what are your griefs? What are your challenges? And then I was assigned to the inside temple space and I was doing touch and sound. And she, we did this opening invocation and called on the Magdalene. And it was the most powerful, like, experience i felt the energy come into the room like the presence of the magdalene and the presence of like this ancient feminine magic and it infused my body to where it was like i was a cup being filled with water from the bottom up so like it went up my feet up my legs up my body and then all of a sudden it was like i was completely saturated in the magdalene like my i am presence and i couldn't stop singing and it was like any part of like Dakota small self that was normally like I would never sing in front of anybody ever I was terrified to sing I wouldn't you know go around touching people randomly like this presence of the divine Magdalene like just came through fully and I started going around and like channeling and like touching people and like doing all these like oh my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like all around the room. And I was singing in this voice that I've never sung in before. I sounded like I was in a church cathedral. It was like, oh, yeah. and it was so magical. And then like that lasted the whole ceremony. And then at the end of it, like I came back to like Dakota smaller self and I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I was uh, so freaked out. I'm like, I can't believe that just happened. And I really, in that moment, like felt the power of the Magdalene. And then started remembering, because it didn't feel like another thing outside of myself was taking over. It felt like I was accessing the higher realm of my own I am presence. And that's what I feel like the Magdalene is about. It was an order of women. It was an actual title. It wasn't just one woman. It was the Marys, the Brides of David. And remembering this is remembering the sacred union that lays within and that Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, it's all examples of women who are committed to accessing their higher potential and to embodying that. And so it's not about putting our power in a figure outside of ourselves and like, oh, praise be, you know, this goddess. It's about, yes, praise be to the I am presence and the Christos light within that being who is a shining example and star. But they did that to point the way for us to find that within our own hearts and wounds and 
activate that in ourselves. And that's what this big wave of resurgence is right now upon the earth. You know, Mary Magdalene was completely shunned as a whore status for the past 2,000 years. And there's this huge resurgence, even in the mainstream media with the Magdalene movie. It's like, no, it is the time for the rise of the divine feminine. And it's not about one taking over. It's about finding that balance between the masculine and the feminine. That's where the true power lies, is in love. And that's, to me, what it's all about. That's what the water is about. That's what the rose lineage is about. That's what water priestess thing about. That's what the water, it all comes back to love. And I believe, you know, we're the children of the most beautiful love story in the universe. And that we are these microcosms of this macrocosm love story between everything. Like everything is making love and pulsing with the essence. Like in nature, it's pulsing with that frequency of like mixing and merging and moving and anyway that was a bit of a tangent but oh that was that was, that's how. That was a tangent that was an amazing tangent um yeah. and you actually spoke to some things that I was going to ask you which was like the difference um between the Magdalene as a frequency as an energy and Mary Magdalene because a lot of the time when I'll speak about the Magdalene I'll have a response from, you know, a sister that says, oh yeah, I've been working with Mary Magdalene and which is Mm -hmm. beautiful and completely understandable. Like, yes. Um, But actually what I mean is the frequency that moves, like the, the frequency that moves through all of it. Like you said, it was a frequency, it was a title and Mary Magdalene just happens to be, um, you know, her soul agreed to be probably one of the most famous or the most famous in this day and age um, priestess of the Magdalene. Um, But she's in no way the, um the like only yeah the only <laughs> or like the grand leader of you yeah. know the even, like I if any such strong goosebumps right now <laughs> I do actually yeah like, yes yes almost yes like, more more stop worshiping me you know yeah stop, stop me, please stop, stop giving your power me. away from something outside yourself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that is the most important I yeah please continue um you can continue Okay, I was just going to say that's the most important. (laughs) Yes, that's the most important thing to remember is like the church, everything, a school. We have been indoctrinated since we are little children to constantly give our power away to something outside of ourselves. And no more, like the reclamation of the divine feminine, of the Magdalene, of these frequencies is the reclamation of our inner gnosis, facing the darkness, facing the shadow, you know, it's our soul's heroic journey, no matter what title you want to call it, whether it's, you know, there's infinite things that you could call it, but really it's that journey of evolution of the soul. And the Magdalene frequency is, is so precious and so special. And I feel like originates from, there's a lot just around Venus and the five pointed star and the rose. Mm -hmm. Could you speak a little bit about, I'm still like, um, I'm going to say like fuzzy on my remembrance, but it like comes through sometimes about the sisterhood of the rose and the connection with Atlantis there. Are you, do you have some um, knowledge or remembrance about the sisterhood of the rose as they, you know, were weaving through Atlantis? Are you kind of like a little Mm. bit like, "Mm, I kind of remember and I'm kind of, um, don't. You know, to be honest with you, like I've never had a big connection with Atlantis. I have more oh. of a connection with Lemuria. Cool. And you know, they say that like Kauai lived on Kauai for three years, that Kauai is the remains of the ancient temples of Lemuria because it was yeah. so high and what, you know, a lot of it went underwater, but the top of Kauai was so wow. tall that apparently yeah. that's like the remains. So I definitely have more of a connection with that frequency cool. um, than Atlantis. Interesting. So, yeah, if I would have not... put you as like totally like obviously Lem- Lemuria too, but like just Atlantis dolphin vibe. Um, yeah, to be I've just never had cool any like, like soul it. memories. So I don't know why my mom right. has. Awesome. My mom's like yeah, I was all telling me her Lem- or, uh, Atlantis stories, but I don't have any for my for myself. Cool, great. Yeah, yeah that's a good. Um, I think sometimes I've talked to a lot of women that are like. The feel that we feel like sometimes we need to have these connections to all these places or all these remembrances that other people have that inspire us or that we feel connected to. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to hear you say like, yeah, no, just 
No. I mean, I could have, but it hasn't like <laughs> hasn't come back to me. I was like, maybe I just didn't. Maybe I skipped that one. You oh know? God, I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what else am I feeling like is being brought up right now? I mm. <sighs> yeah, I'm just feeling Magdalene and weaving back to what we were speaking to before and just feeling like, yeah, we never worshiped like as priestesses of Isis even or priestesses of the Magdalene. I think that's a super important piece again to just reweave back into is these beings see us as equals and mm -hmm. we're like, they, they kind of paved the way in a lot of ways because I, like how I kind of see it is they were able to really like merge their oversoul, their higher self into their, if they walked as humans into their human awareness and were able to mm -hmm. kind of like bring all aspects of discordant, seemingly discordant aspects together in unity mm. and really like be embodied in that way. And I feel like we're in training, you know, to, to do that. And so, yeah, these beings are so amazing. They have shown such a good way and like such a powerful way. Um, but like you said, like we're our own heroines and, and they're just as interested in our journey. Like they're so interested in our <laughs> totally. journey too, you know? Yeah. Um, which I think is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling like the dolphins come through and I'm wondering, like this question is like, what do you, what have you learned from dolphins or dolphin consciousness that um, comes forward right now in your mind yes oh I love that question and I was totally just feeling the dolphins too so I'm so <laughs> happy that you brought that you brought that up for me dolphins embody the higher capabilities that lay dormant within us as human beings a higher potential and specifically around the frequency of ecstasy bliss and joy because I like this is this is my perspective but in my life, like I believe that our natural state of being as humans is ecstasy, like heaven on earth, joy, ecstasy. Like we're meant, like we are created as these divine children of this love story to live in the Garden of Eden, to live these lives of like beauty and ecstasy and, and joy. And the dolphins, as we know, like they are the examples like of this as a, as a species that's still physically embodied here on this planet. They're embodying that frequency of just like joy playfulness and you know we're in this process as humans of em embracing emotion and like our anger our sadness like our grief all of these things are so precious like they're so amazing and what i feel i've come to realize is that when we allow those energies to move like when we really allow ourselves to fully feel the grief to fully feel the rage to fully feel the feelings like to feel all of it when we let those energies move what naturally comes is a kind of ecstasy and it's not always like a showy ecstasy of like oh i'm so blissed out but like this feeling of like oh just like yumminess when we allow ourselves to feel and for me the dolphins embody that so beautifully and another thing about the dolphins is like it reminds us that ecstasy is food for our ka body and this is something that they talk about in the magdalene manuscripts is like ecstasy feeds our light body and when we're building our light body, it's really important to cultivate states of joy and states mm -hmm. that light that light us up because it brings more light. It allows our cells mm -hmm. to open and to literally hold more light in them. So the dolphins, um, listening to dolphin noises, like calling on the dolphin frequency, playing like dolphins. Like I love to pretend I'm a dolphin and just look ridiculous and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> just like bounce around and make dolphin like me sounds and it always cheers me up like uh. the dolphins <laughs> remind us of joy and remind us of and this is part of too like the dormant capacities that I talked about earlier when we are in these states of ecstasy and joy in my own body I have seen myself visions multi-dimensional experiences like dolphins are multi-dimensional yeah and I will never forget like the most I don't do substances very often, but the most powerful mushroom journey that I ever went on, I was on Kauai at Secrets Beach by the mermaid throne. This there's like literally this cove where it's, there's a mermaid throne, the mermaids hang out, the dolphins are there. I saw this interdimensional dolphin portal with like these white and blue columns. 
and then the dolphins came and I saw more dolphins there than I'd ever seen in my life. They were pods of them jumping and jumping and jumping in their pods because they love that frequency of ecstasy. And I knew that they could feel us. Like we were so excited. Static and like we were playing and laughing and they love play and they love joy and I started to feel just the multi-dimensional access point and the connection to sound as well like sound mm-hmm. healing something I'm really passionate about and the connection between sound and water and as we know we are a vibration we are literally sound and light waves in water and what happened is like realizing that the dolphins aren't just existing in this 3d experience but they're able to have other experiences like us with astral traveling like they're existing in many dimensions consciously at once where a lot of times like us as humans we're not conscious of our other multi-dimensional aspects this is a little more out there but (laughs) (laughs) we're eating it back in but yeah the dolphins like they communicate telepathically they can they create holographic images that they send to each other like i believe that we have these potentials too as human beings but we're still sorting through like we're still going through our process of like moving through the density of like war and wasting our energy on all this like polarity and coming back into unity the sacred union which is you know the magdalene frequencies and i feel like when we do that as a species which i feel like a lot of people call ascension Um, I feel like that can be misunderstood. It's like not about bypassing, but when we move out of the need for separation and war, then we'll be able to access more of those superpowers like the dolphins, that holographic telepathy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So dolphins are some of the greatest teachers on the earth, I feel, and the whales Mm -hmm. and just nature. Yeah, Yeah. we're like very big fans of the whales and the dolphins over here. I also want to share, I don't know if I've ever shared this, like, online or, like, out into the, like, you know, people, people, because it's very, like, multidimensional, maybe I have, I don't know, but, um, that, like, okay, when the whales are washing up and dying, like, I don't like that, yet there's this part of me that's very okay with that, because what I feel very strongly is that the whales are actually moving into another dimension. It's not that they're actually really... Dying per se, it looks like they're dying to us in the physical realm, um, but they're actually almost like I don't want to say like ascending. Like you said, that word can kind of have interesting kind of it can, yeah. But I feel like they're sort of moving into this like new energy, whether it's like an overlay of the earth that we experience, or I don't know. You know, it's hard to kind of define with our human minds, but um, mm-hmm. I feel like it's like almost like a conscious mass exodus in some way Mm. Um, and yet what I know to be true that I've downloaded is that there always needs to be some whales alive on this planet for humans if there's no whales left in the ocean it's kind of game over for humans because I hold a lot of Um, goddess bumps yeah I feel them too I felt them through my throat yeah so yeah there's that kind of just juxtaposition of just like fuck, I love whales so much and I don't like what's happening at all. And yet there's this knowingness that let it be, let it flow. There's something Mm. happening here that I don't fully understand. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, lots of energy Mm. coming up there. Um, Yeah. As I gaze up at my orca picture. Oh, (laughs) yeah, sacred pause. What's your favorite whale? Do you have a favorite whale? You know, I love that you asked me that question. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> um, it's, well, okay. So when I was in fourth grade, I did a report on the blue whales. And I just loved the blue whales ever since. Like, they're wow. the biggest whale. And, like, when I did the report, there were only, like, less than 100. And I think that they've made a comeback, at least a little bit. Um, or, God, was it 10? Like, a ridiculously no, low yeah. number. Wow. Yeah, but I love the blue whales. I haven't. Like, but oh my gosh, much with them yet. I will. You're gonna make yeah. me. <laughs> what? Totally. Oh but, my gosh. Like what? in in the physical, like I okay. So for the whole three years I lived on Kauai, I didn't see one whale. It really? was so weird because my eyesight's not the best, and like sometimes it's hard for me. I understand. You I too. Understand. Yes. Oh we my... can talk about that later more in depth. Okay, let's go. I, I would love to have that. an eye yes. eye priestess conversation. Okay. Oh my god. I think yes. it's like Oracle of Delphi, Greece, like layover. I want to like let's remember Whoa. to talk about this. Okay. But yes. Mm-hmm. So I never see whales. <laughs> 
whales on Kauai. Everyone's like, look at the whale. I'm like, great. I don't see the whale, right? I'm like, what is it, whales? Like, why? Why haven't I seen you yet? So yeah. I moved to Maui. And my merman partner, like, while I'm in Bali for a month, he's like, sends me this video of him swimming with whales, like, literally, like, right next to oh them. My God. Like, and it's like unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I get back home and I didn't, I get a like, swim that close but I got to swim with them and like they were jumping out of the water like in front of me and their sound the sound of the whales underwater is my favorite sound like in the whole world I understand I'm just yeah I was literally it was like just being transported to heaven nirvana so and those whales are what whale what whales are those I'm like having a total blank right now yeah 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 in Hawaii yeah um that's amazing that's such and a like day. spinning like spinning and jumping and my but my partner's like I've never seen him do this before and I'm like <laughs> we're stoked <laughs> we're stoked oh my gosh were you just like ha- you just happened to be swimming or like what was no they come to this specific spot oh. it's like a power vortex this is uh, a whole other story I can oh share. my gosh I'm coming <laughs> yeah Seriously, I'm having a re- I'm having a retreat in August. If anyone wants oh to come, God. there's some stasis left. I'm agree. <laughs> but oh, yay. <laughs> some other, we'll we'll play another time. Yeah. But there's this vortex, and we just kayaked out, and they were just oh jumping gosh. and playing, and yeah. And then did you just the like kayaks are great? Kayak? You were just like I'm swimming. Yeah, did you left the kayak. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get back? Like you can kayak? you can show with the kayak. You look ridiculous. Yeah, that's hard. Like that's it's so definitely hard. not a graceful process. You just yeah. kind of like flop yourself on it and like awkwardly waddle and like yeah. pray that you're not gonna tip over. Worth it. Um, so worth it. That's amazing. It just reminds me of all the dreams that I have when there's whales. I had one a couple nights ago. Whenever there's whales, <gasps> I like launch into the water to swim with them. Like I go like oh. a crazy person. That's so magical. Yeah. And sometimes it's great and sometimes it's weird. Like the other night there was an orca and then it like turned into this weird gray whale and it was like a little bit aggressive, but not at all because it sounded like really close to me really fast. And it was like, Whoa. I don't really know what that means. But um, anyway, ah, we could get on so many whale tangents right now. There's but... just so many tangents. There's yeah. so many things to talk we'll about. It. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it not as whale tangenty for the people because okay. maybe not everyone's well, no, whatever. It's fine. This is sort of the Mermaid Moon and Dakota. Bring it back. You're in our sphere. Bring it back. <laughs> You're into okay. whales. Bring it back. Okay, so um, I have like a million questions I'd love to ask you, but I'm feeling like maybe we will like start to like, you know, go to yes. the, the um, wrapping it up. Um, so yeah. we would love to share with you, um, both Dakota and I, uh, we have some opportunities to deepen into the frequencies that we were presencing today. Um, I was speaking to Dakota at the start of the call before we recorded. And when I originally a- was going to ask her, um, to come on, I knew that we both had these opportunities and I was like, does it make sense that we can both speak about them at the end of the call? And then I was like, just fucking patriarchal bullshit. Like, obviously. <laughs> So these are tests. <laughs> these are opportunities um, to deepen into if you're interested in these frequencies, um, working with water, working with um, you know beco- becoming and embodying the water priestess that you are, already are, um, or working with the Magdalene. We have some opportunities for you. So Dakota, yeah. would you love to talk about the water mysterium um, that's available? Yeah, I would love to. I just, I want to say, I just love you. I just love, I love you. You're like, no, of course we're not going to do that. We're not going to talk about it. Like, and that's the thing. It's like resonance and different timing and trusting that like everyone has, yeah. has their thing for them, yeah, you know? Exactly. So anyway, okay. So the water priestess mysterium is something I've been cultivating for years. Like it's the pinnacle, like what I've been working on. And I'm just so excited that like, you know, you finally get the green light for something. Yeah. And it's like, I finally got the green light. So what it is, it's an eight month journey and it's all about the water priestess art. So we'll go over like the mystical and rituals and ceremonies and practices, but then it'll also be like the practical element of caring for your body temple and like nutrition and water and activating the water in your body so that you become your own water priestess oracle to access these remembrances that lay within you. 
And yeah, we'll go over the different gates of the feminine. So through your conception and birth and moon magic and sexuality and like going to death and the crone and different forms of water, like rain and hot springs and um, rivers and waterfalls and water goddesses. And basically it's like everything, like all my favorite things and all my, fa all my teachings like finally packaged up in this like eight month journey. And I'm just really excited. So. Yeah. It sounds so yeah. magical. So Thanks if you're letting me share. Oh, of course. So if you're really feeling the water magic, I'm going to leave a link to, um, to discover more about that. Um, yes, yes, yes. Also, if you're not already connected to, to Dakota in some way, like on her email list or somehow you should do that if you're resonating <laughs> because you also have a lot of beautiful imagery um, mm. colors and just like the symbolism so. that is conveyed like there's so much that can even be we can kind of like wake up that's why I was talking about the video before yeah. I think I was talking about it when we were recording um yeah there's just so much that can even come through when we see you know like beautiful you know Dakota was dancing in a white dress underwater and that was just I was feeling it so much because I didn't I feel like my home is whenever I'm underwater I'm like yeah this is like what it should look I'm like. home yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I don't know. Underwater. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what's going on up here? <laughs> Still very land-like. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I'll leave a link, um, and then you also have the opportunity to step into the Temple of the Rose, which is a three-month journey um, that the Sister of the Mermaid Moon is sort of um, holding space for, and that's a very like red gold Magdalene Isis journey. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing ceremonies with. Uh, Yeshua, Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, Mother Mary, Anna, Mary Magdalene, um, and we're going to be working with priestess practices as well. So as much as I'm like such a water priestess, we're going to be really pillaring in these like red, gold, almost like more deep earth energies um, mm. with the water, with fire, with air, with ether, with all of it. Um, and that was actually, you know, it's funny that you're talking about the green light because I... Um, I got this download to do a journey, a red, gold, Magdalene, Isis journey from Yeshua who came to me when I was in Paris about a year and a half. Wow. And I like felt him over my bed and was like, you're going to do, you need to do a Magdalene, Isis journey and the colors are red and gold. And then he kind of pieced out and I was wow. like, oh, okay. <gasps> um, and it just wasn't the right time. And uh, a couple months ago I was meditating with, uh, in communion with Mary Magdalene and some other piece you know and they're like time this is it this is what you're doing um so I love it yeah it's kind of it's interesting that um things are culminating in that way and even though I like didn't really mm. feel ready when I was like preparing it I was like are you are you guys sure you have the right time like are you sure the right person like I don't know totally <laughs> oh no I do that before everything I share it's like you know maybe this is a good idea does that happen to you what is that it's like oh, this yeah doubt and you just like have to overcome this hurdle of like your worthiness everything oh I'm so so in it like just as a side note for <laughs> the entrepreneurs priestess is listening or you know, people that are wanting to step in that direction like every time this time included every time I'm launching anything there's quite a bit of fear that always comes up from yeah. lots of different angles um it's very root chakra based for me and also worthiness based for me and yeah. and just like trying to um really be true to the priestess frequencies that I'm holding space for while trying to interface with this whole business technology money kind of totally. thing totally um marketing yeah. you know all that stuff yeah. and yeah that's like such a journey that's what I also hold space for a program called divine feminine in business which isn't open right now mm. but um I'm a student of it you know and it's like it's just yeah I don't know, that's a whole other conversation it's we a whole other that. conversation do another can, one yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So I'll leave, mm. I'll leave the links to both of those below. Um, awesome. Also, just go check out the pages because might I say they're both beautiful, even if you're not really like, yeah, think you're gonna die. I wanted to compliment yeah. you. Yours is just stunning. I was really Thank impressed. Thank you. I think yeah. it's the same as, to, as yours. <laughs> Styling. Yeah, and I also, I forgot to mention that I do have a special. So if you want like special discount, you can PM me about that. Okay, cool. We'll get you a you special ladies. discount. Yes. We'll yeah. Um, and we'll figure out what that is after and send you the, the links and stuff. 
Okay, cool. So, oh my gosh, it was so great to speak with this you. This is today. so fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a long time coming. Um, it definitely was. I feel like we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, to everybody that's here with us, holding space with us, like, mm-hmm. we honor you. I think I could speak for both Dakota and I and that. We honor you. Thank you yeah. so for walking this priestess path even if you think that I don't know if I'm walking the priestess path I'm just sort of new to all this stuff if you're here if you're listening you are you're on the journey and like Mm. biggest amount of respect because we're just doing such big things right now and even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes when you're just like making dinner kind of having a lot of thoughts (laughs) in your head like being like what am I doing with my life and you're like I don't know how I'm contributing to this new golden age you know it's like you are you know um you being alive <laughs> you are yeah. you're just existing with your sweet beautiful breath mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and just like deepest respect and honoring that we're all beautiful equals in this in this space because mm. I know a lot of the times you know you listen to people and there's this kind of energy that you know we're the experts and like excuse my French fuck that bullshit you know <laughs> <laughs> surprised that I swear because I do a lot um I love that we're all just like we're all walking each other walking home. each other home yeah 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 and the, the thing I love is I learn more teaching than I do any other way yeah and so I, I learned so that. much we learn from ev- we learn from each other and that's what I love about these online groups is like oh my gosh we you're literally bringing information that the group is different every time because of the women in it so yeah. I love that I love the alchemy so great okay so, so good yes 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 so yeah so much love um mm. may, may you be so blessed those of you who are listening and with us thank you for the codes mm. that you're bringing to this world and may we continue to deepen um outside of this conversation if you're called um you'll have the links and you'll have the opportunities to um to jo- to keep um continuing these conversations mm. Yes, so, so grateful. Mahalo kia kua. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, thank you. Bye, love.